The wind howled across Ascension Rock as William looked westward toward the setting sun. He inhaled the cool air deeply and took in the enormity of the moment. Gazing up at the overcast sky, he was overcome by a strange sensation. Everything was about to change. He could feel the presence of Christ drawing near, the Son of Man returning as foretold. The world was coming to an end. Behind him stood the people of Calvary, New York. They had spent their latter months preparing for this day with passion and dedication, weathering the adversities that followed the opening of each seal, held together through it all by an unbreakable bond of hope and fear. They too peered out along the horizon at the blood-red sun. Families, young and old, huddled together, clasping each other's trembling hands as the sky continued to dim, while the most zealous of the worshippers remained steady, eyes raised upward and hands stretched out from the sleeves of their white robes and into the air, yearning to be as close to heaven as they could. As he stood a distance apart from the crowd at the edge of the overlook, William felt the warmth of his community at his back. The people had first met him with reservation and even jeers when he'd returned six months earlier, but they were now a thousand strong on the hill that commanded a view of the eastern banks of the Hudson and a million strong across the global valley below. The gospel had traveled far and wide, and William was honored to be its messenger, delivering unto the uneducated masses the wisdom of the divine and the knowledge of man, two parallel paths that converged upon one road of truth, that the King of Kings was coming to redeem all mankind. Though all were united in anticipation of what was said to arrive at dusk, there were those among them who were unsure if it was truly going to happen, some even skeptical of whether William actually believed it himself. But they dared not speak their concerns aloud in the presence of the faithful who had given up their livelihoods to prepare for this moment. There was too much at stake to voice any kind of disbelief, and still, even in the most doubtful, there remained a latent, unsettling feeling that their reckoning just might be upon them. The wind was lightly blowing. The clouds further enveloped the sky. William could only see the dull outline of the sun behind the silver shawl, but this was all proceeding just as it was written. Scripture had a way of being theatric, he thought to himself. Like a curtain draped across the heavens, the clouds would conceal the bridegroom until dusk, when the tableau would be pulled apart to reveal their Savior and bring about the final act of history. It's really happening, Brother William, said Josiah, standing beside him with tears in his eyes. The time has finally come. Yes, William replied, and our faith shall be duly rewarded. The sun kissed the horizon. The congregation began to sing, their voices carrying canorously through the heavy air. Out from their quivering lips came songs of praise, mercy, and redemption, preludes to the impending blare of the angel's seven trumpets. William listened, satisfied and proud. He had led his people to the well, and now it was time to drink their share of salvation. In just a few moments they would ascend. Those who atoned and believed in the imminence of Christ would soon sit beside the heavenly throne, draped in garments of righteousness for all eternity." Christ would reign for one thousand years until new Jerusalem would descend from the sky and heaven and earth become one. But those who did not believe, the fearful and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, would face boundless scorn for thirty generations, left behind to walk the earth as it is swallowed by God's wrath, until the dead are raised for the final judgment and the coming of their second everlasting death.